Hello beautiful soul, welcome to my podcast or my YouTube channel. I'm so glad you're here. I'm grateful and honored that you chose to watch or listen to my show. In today's conversation episode, I had the pleasure to talk to Jamila Jamunja. Jamila is a professional spirit guide medium, author of The Seven Types of Spirit Guide, host of The Spirit Guide Show, and founder of Spirit Guide Society. Since her spirit guide appeared to her in physical form 20 years ago, she has helped thousands of people connect with their own spirit guides through private readings, courses, and workshops, and her weekly online show. We talked about her first encounter with one of her spirit guides, how she has developed her mediumship, how her guides helped her write her book, and then we talk about the seven types of spirit guides and how they help us in our human journey. At the end, she describes how we can develop a practice to connect with our own spirit guide, so you don't wanna miss that. I hope you enjoy the show, and if you do, please hit the subscribe button, leave a comment or a review, and share this episode with a friend. Enjoy the show. Hello, Jamila. Thanks so much for being here on the podcast. Well, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Um, I want to make sure that I'm pronouncing your name correct again. It's Jamila Jamunja. Right? Jamunja, yeah. yeah. Um, is there a story behind it? The name? Yeah. Yeah, I got my name from one of my spirit guides. So it was like, not in the sense that they like a booming voice came from heaven and told me this is your name. But it was, um, I was looking for a name for several reasons. Um, and this was the name I was given. Awesome. Does it mean anything in particular? Uh, my first name is like my given name that was given to me by my birth mother. It means um, the beautiful. And my last name um, come, is um, connected to Yemaya, the goddess of the ocean. That's beautiful. And actually in Brazil, um, there's a huge community um, that um, goes to the ocean, I think on December 2nd. Yeah. To, um, yeah. Yeah. We, we, we call it Yemanja. So is that the yeah. name? Yeah. Oh, all right. All right. So you pronounce it different in different countries. Um, but yeah, that's the one. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Um, and so I also know that you were actually born here in South America in Colombia. Colombia, right? yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about your story and then your spiritual awakening? Sure. So I, like you said, I was born in Colombia um, to my birth mother, who is probably um, uh, Embera, um, which is one of the indigenous cultures that lived on the west coast of Colombia in the rainforests and in the mountains. And um, to my birth father, I didn't know anything about um, until fairly recently, only that he must have been, there must have been some African in there. Um, that's all I knew. And then I was adopted by my parents who are um, Dutch and they took me to Germany where I grew up. And then I did the usual thing that most people do. I went to school, I, um, I went to college. I thought I'm gonna pick something that I wanna do for the rest of my life, et cetera, et cetera. I would get married, have kids, all that stuff. Um, it didn't quite out that, work out that way. <laughs> um, in my 20s, early 20s, mid 20s, I was very frustrated. I was still in college. I didn't like it. I. I'm someone who really likes learning, but the way it was done in, in, in a college setting really didn't suit me. Since then, I learned that I'm much better just by learning stuff myself, mm -hmm. just sitting down, um, reading the books, watching the videos, whatever, and then apply it. Um, yeah. Anyway, so yeah, <laughs> I was very frustrated. Um, and so I had always felt like some kind of calling as if like something, there is something that I needed to do. Like I have a purpose. I just didn't know what it was. I would sometimes look at like, let's say um, students that are very academic and they knew they were gonna be a professor. Or I had one friend who when he was eight years old already knew he was gonna be a dentist. 
-hmm. and I was always like how do you know that already that's crazy <laughs> and or like someone who was very athletic and I same question like how do you know like and I was always je jealous in the sense they know what they're doing and they just can like focus on that and get started basically and I didn't have that I had no clue um so I had this, but I still had this calling and I felt also um, I had identity issues and trust issues that had to do with being adopted. And if someone's out there who's adopted listening to this, you probably know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, were, you, were you disconnected from your roots up until? Your yeah, I had no idea. Like I had never been back. I had never like done any research. I had no idea. Um, which also because Colombia, um, was and is still known to be like not the most safe country although things have changed but um so when i was younger it wasn't really an option to like go and explore mm -hmm. um and so yeah in my early mid-20s i started being frustrated and i was like i need to know like where i come from i need to like figure out who i am because if i know who i am then maybe i know where i'm going so I decided to do some research into my ancestry and I started online and I started looking into it and I knew that I'm like partially indigenous I had, and I was like oh maybe it's interesting to see where like what community what indigenous community I come from so I started doing research online finding information etc and I found out that I'm very probably Embera and so um then I started looking into their culture and, and their spirituality because I also had just started on my own spiritual journey. Um, and as I started looking into that and I found out that they um, um, yeah, have a shamanic culture in the sense that they work with shamans um, and, and healers, etc. And um, then I found out that um, especially in the past, they also worked with ayahuasca rituals. And so I did a ayahuasca ritual with a shaman who came from Colombia. Um, so you actually came to Colombia? Yeah. No, no, no he came to Europe. Um, oh. And yeah, and I did an um, ayahuasca session with that shaman. Um, disclaimer, I'm not saying everyone should do ayahuasca. It's not for everyone. <laughs> if you want to do it, please, please do a lot of research, know what you're doing, find the right people not saying go out there and just do it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um so that's what i did and um during that ayahuasca ritual i connected with my ancestors on a spiritual level um but even before that before the ayahuasca ritual i started reading about shamanism mostly neo-shamanism or core shamanism which is basically the westernized form of traditional shaman knowledge um and um i started reading a few books about it and then one night I woke up in the middle of the night I don't know what time it was maybe three four um, and I opened my eyes and there's this man standing in the doorway of my bedroom like in full physical form and I was like oh who are you <laughs> because I had never seen this guy before mm -hmm. and my um, and partner at the time was still sleeping next to me and I noticed that I couldn't move now I know that's called sleep paralysis back in the day I didn't know what it was but it didn't scare me or anything I was just like oh I know this is something spiritual I don't know what it means right. I just know this is you didn't weird. think it was a, a robber or anything no 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 I didn't um I should I don't know why, because I should have. I mean, yeah, just logically, if someone's right there, but I didn't. So, but then I just, I just stared at him, and he stared back at me. And then out of nowhere, he had this like baseball size, um, the red glowing orb in his hand, and he held it like this, and he threw it over to me. And I um, remember like feeling the impact on the bed it made to the left of me. Um, and the next thing I knew is that I must have like blanked out, um, passed out. And yeah. what did he look like? Did he look like? Oh, yeah, he, way? yeah, he looked like, um, yes, def definitely important, um, important part of the story. He looked like um, he was from South America. That was very clear. He had short, dark hair, darker skin. Um, he um, wasn't wearing, just wearing sh jeans, no shirt, no socks. Uh, just jeans and yeah just staring at me and he looked like he was of indigenous descent from South America okay. um, so and he throws over that red glowing orb and then 
I pass out. And the next thing I know in the morning, I wake up or open my, not even, I didn't even open my eyes yet, but my, my hand already went to the left and started looking for that red glowing orb. And then my brain started working. I was like, oh, wow, what happened? Uh, and then I opened my eyes um, and I called my friend because she and I started our spiritual journey at the same time, a few weeks before. And I told her about it and we both wondered what it meant and who that was, and we couldn't figure it out. And then two days later, we had already signed up for a shamanism workshop in um, Berlin, in Germany, where I was living at the time. And so we went there, and when we came there and the workshop started, um, the guy, our teacher, who has unfortunately passed away by now, but he um, told us that, okay, in this workshop, we're going to, going to learn to connect with our cosmic, no, he uh, called them spirit helpers. And um, we were going to like travel to the spirit world and uh, meet our spirit helpers. And it, when we do that, then um, usually he said, they will give you energy when you meet them for the first time, either by giving you a hug mm -hmm. um, and you can feel the energy really flowing into your body or sometimes in form of a, um, bright glowing orb. Wow. And so I was like, wow, that's amazing. You got your now company. I know. Yeah. Now I know who that guy was. That was my spirit helper. So that was really what, um, yes, I was on my spiritual path a little bit already, but, um, this really was like a wake up call. Like, Hey, yeah, there's like more the big, out there the than you would think. Yeah. 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 Because I couldn't, like, even my logical brain couldn't explain it away. So <laughs> I love that story. Thank you so much yeah. for sharing. You're welcome. And I think it was beautiful that you got your confirmation because that's how spirit works, right? In, in mysterious and sometimes even funny ways to yeah. give you that little nudge of confirmation. But one thing that I wanted to, to ask you about it, because you actually saw that spirit, like, with your physical eyes right yeah mm -hmm. but just for anyone who's maybe new to uh, connecting with spirit guides that's not the only way that we can connect or can communicate with no, them, no no right no, no. what are the the yeah. other ways that we can um because i think most people don't actually have that ability to to see with physical eyes right mostly yeah. it's either in the third eye or telepathy can you tell us a little bit about like what ways we can communicate and connect with them? Sure. So first of all, I want to say, like you already mentioned, you do not have to physically see your spirit guide or even hear their voice um, to connect with them. That is, it's very rare that that happens, even professional mediums, witches, shamans, other kinds of spirit workers usually do not see their guides like this. Um, what usually happens is that you use your clairs, um, and I'll explain that in a little bit, to connect with your guides. So your clairs are your psychic senses. And yes, we all have psychic senses. Um, so they are, they're um, basically the equivalent of your physical senses, only they work for the unseen dimensions. So you have um, the most famous is clairvoyance. Um, so you see um, a spirit, for example. Mm -hmm. um, you can have um, objective clairvoyance. That's when, like in my case, I saw my spirit get outside of myself in physical form. More often, um, you will have a subjective clairvoyance experiences, which is like that you see it in your mind's eye with your third eye. And that if you want to know what that's like, then close your eyes and just visualize what you had for breakfast this morning. And you see your breakfast with your mind's eye. You don't see it outside of you. You see it here. And um, so that's usually how um, you can clairvoyantly see your spirit guide. Number two is Claire audience. That's another famous one. And that's when you hear your spirit guides. So for example, a lot of people have had the experience of like either just waking up or about to feel all asleep and they hear someone call their name. That would be objective Claire audience. You hear the voice outside of yourself. Again, that is 
uh, it happens, but usually it's like su subjective. So you hear a voice inside your own head and it can even sound like your own voice, but it's actually your spirit guide talking to you. And then um, number three is clairsentience, which is clear feeling. So you feel something, for example, you feel um, a wave of love um, that comes when your spirit guide is close. Um, yeah, you feel goose, goosebumps. Exactly. That would be, again, objective clairsentience. You objectively feel it with your body. You can't make it up that you have goosebumps. And then um, the subjective one would be more like on an emotional level. You feel a wave of love, for example. Just as valid, clairsentience is just as valid as clairvoyance and clairaudience, especially you empaths out there. And I know probably there's a lot of you watching this show. Um, you probably might never see or hear your guides, but you will feel your guides and it's just as valid. So then we have Claire. So these are the three um, yeah, most known ones. Then we have um, Claire Gustin's, which is Claire tasting. So for example, if you had a grandmother that would always bake a specific kind of cookies, and then suddenly you're doing something else and suddenly you taste those cookies, that's your grandmother who has passed who's saying hello to you. Um, and then you have Claire scent, which is clear um, um, smelling, which is um, similar. For example, let's say your grandfather who has passed would always smoke tobacco and suddenly you smell that tobacco. Um, again, can be objective, can be subjective, both equal, equally valid. Um, and then there's one more that doesn't correspond to one of our physical senses, which is clear cognizance. Um, this is mostly with uh, people have this when they're idea people, when they're like big thinkers, when, um, uh, for example, people, entrepreneurs or, or um, small business owners, anyone who likes to work with visions and, and these kinds of things. So that's when you get sudden downloads or insights. So you don't even know where it comes from. You just know that's how it is. And so that's one of my main clairs. It's a little bit harder to, to detect um, because you don't know where it's coming from. Um, and so a lot of people just think, oh, that's just my, that's just who I am. They don't even realize that's not normal. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so that these are the six clairs that your spirit guide can use to communicate with you. That's amazing. Thank you so much for explaining sure. so perfectly. And um, I have a question about this. Um, because I, I feel like while you're describing, I feel like the listeners are probably reflecting on moments that they've felt something, that they've seen something with their third eye or they've smelled a scent from whomever. But it's very, I, I think it's very um, normally, especially in the beginning of that spiritual awakening to doubt and to like think, think that we're making things up. And I know it's happened to me like years ago, I would like meditate, I would hear messages. And the first thought in my mind was my ego saying, you're just making this up. Yeah. What advice would you give to anyone who's thinking, going through the same thing? Like how can people just have that trust? Sure. So there are two things that I want to mention. Um, number one is to if you see something, for example, you do a meditation and you want to connect with your spirit guide and you see a tiger, don't immediately assume, okay, I saw this, this is my spirit guide. My rule is like the rule of three. So if things happen three times, then I know that I can trust it. If it happens only once, then I take note but I don't immediately assign like big, a big meaning to it. So I wait until I see some or hear or feel or whatever three times, um, because then I know spirit really wants me to know this is important. Right. Um, and number two is really practice. <laughs> it's really about like um, 
trying to connect with your guide again and again and again. And later on, I'll explain how to do that in a practical way. And then it's really about practice because um, connecting with your spirit guide is just like any other skill. We can all learn it, just like we can all dance. Not everyone's going to be like a professional dancer, but we can all dance and we can all connect with our spirit guides. It's a skill. You can practice it. And that's what it takes. And the more practice you get, the more you realize, oh, there's something to this. And the more your ego will understand, OK, um, I'm not making this up. So it's really about like doing it again and again and again and again. Yeah, I love that. And I think um, a, a lot of people take imagination for granted, you know, and I think we need to go back to that um, pure child inside of us that just, you know, allows the imagination to take us wherever yeah. it wants to take. Because we, we think we're making it up, but sometimes we might be making it up and that's our imagination, but that's still a spiritual experience. Yes, right? yes, because our spirit guides use our imagination to communicate with us. So let's say you're doing a, a guided meditation, as there are many on YouTube, um, do a guided meditation and you think, oh, I'm just making this up. But that's okay, because your guides know that you that you are using your imagination in that moment and even if like let's say 90 percent of what happens you are making it up your spirit guide will be able to like kind of like inject their message into it so the five percent that you're not making up is them and um that's valid and that's okay so it's fine to use your imagination your you, your imagination is a tool to it's like a stepping stone towards the spirit world mm -hmm. so don't be afraid to make things up it's totally fine yeah i love that and i have a question i was going to ask you later on but i think it's it's a good time to ask um about free will so like what's your view on free will because i've heard that our guides don't don't infringe on our free will so that they will only connect and communicate with us if we want what's your view on that and is this really the case always i think that's true um however i don't think it's like free will in the sense like our ego's free will because sometimes we have never heard about spirit guides and our spirit guide will appear so it's more like about the soul if your soul is ready then your spirit guide will appear so yes i definitely believe there is free will um and there has to be and also um your spirit guides are not like a magic genie in the sense of um they're not going to come and like manifest a lamborghini for you if that's you know mm -hmm. what you want or they're not going to tell you the lottery numbers yeah. um it's really about they are here like a mentor and a guide on your soul's path so your free will chose your path mm -hmm. what you want to accomplish in this lifetime what your purpose is etc and your guides are here to help guide you along the way um maybe like a sports car is part of it great then um, you will get it but if it's not that important then they won't help you get one <laughs> yeah yeah and i think your free will can be you opening up to a guided meditation and just saying yeah. i'm going to be committed to the practice yes definitely that can be a yes sort of definitely free will yeah awesome so you have a beautiful book called The Seven Types of Spirit Guide, How to Connect and Communicate with Your Cosmic Helpers. I love that. I've never heard Cosmic Helpers before. <laughs> um, that's published by Hay House UK. So that's awesome. Congratulations on this. Thank you. And just before, I'd love for you to tell us the seven types. Just before you do that, I want to ask, how did you come up with the number seven? Was it like through your personal experience, like you've connected with different types and then you sort of structured into seven? Because I've, I've, done, I've done a podcast about six types. Ah. The other day I saw uh, this a woman on YouTube talking about nine types of spirit guides. So I just, I'm just curious how you came up with those seven types. 
Sure. So that's, um, yeah, experience and working with my guides. Um, after I saw this first guide in physical form over the next, I want to say 15 years, I had random encounters with spirit guides. So I would in Barcelona, for example, where I lived for a while, I was um, out in a park and I saw a nature spirit pop up out of the earth um, and run around and then disappear again. <laughs> um, or I saw another time when I was living in Berlin, I saw three aliens, um, similar as the first time I saw that first guide. Um, they were just there in the middle of the night. I wake up, I wanted to leave the room and I see three aliens standing there. <laughs> Um, I also had um, encounters with angels. And so this stuff would happen randomly, but I had no idea what to do with it. I was still trying to figure out what to do with my life. Mm -hmm. And somehow this just happened from time to time. It just became part of my life, but I didn't really know, okay, that I can do something with it. Mm -hmm. and, did, and so did, then, sorry, go ahead. And then in 2016, um, I realized that these things would happen more and they happened in combination with, sorry, 2016, 2017, 2017. And um, these things started happening in combination with other people. So I would be out with friends for a drink and I would see someone at the end of the bar, for example, and I didn't know that person. And suddenly I would see, oh, that person has an ancestor spirit with them. And um, I started getting messages from these spirit guides for people. Um, and I didn't give people that I didn't know messages. And again, if anyone's listening, don't do that because you don't know if that person wants to know free will. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Remember that you might be excited, but yeah, don't do that. Um, but then one time it happened with someone that I knew a little bit. So I went up to him and said, hey, um, I don't know if you believe in this stuff. Would you be open to letting me tell you what I just saw? And he said, yeah, sure. And I told him I saw these two spirits around you. And he said, yeah, I know. I know that already. So that was like this confirmation. And I was like, oh, wow, I can do something with this. Um, and now, now I forgot your question. Sorry. <laughs> No, it's great. I was gonna um, ask if they they've helped. Write the seven types. Yes. Yeah, if they've right. helped you write the book, actually. If yes. Guys have helped so that come about. Yeah, um, and so that happened in 2017, and then um, I got one day I woke up from a nap and I got a download from my guides and they were basically saying, so you're going to start doing readings now. And I was like, what? No, I, I don't have time for this. I'm running a business. It's not going that well. I need to spend time with it. Um, and they were like, yeah, well, yeah, you're going to do it. And this is what your website's going to look like, like exactly how they wanted it structured and how I was going to do the marketing and the quiz that's also in the book. All of these things, just a huge download. And I was like, OK, I'll give it two days. And then I um, started setting up the website. And before the website was even done, I had my first client. So I was like, oh, there's something to this. I'm definitely guided here. Um, and the same thing happened with the book. So I had thought about writing a book. Um, and then I was invited to a, a writer's retreat in Southern France in a castle for a month for free. I was like, oh, yes, I'm definitely guided. <laughs> this is not normal. <laughs> And so I went there and started writing the book, but I had no idea what I was doing. And so it took another year, one and a half or something. But every time, like all the time I was guided, like write the book, write the book. Mm -hmm. And I would get information that um, was important. And then I found out um, that Hay House has an online course about how to write a book. And I signed up for an online course. And then I found out that um, they have writers workshops, live workshops. And I went there and I got to talk to like, some of the people there and just it happened more and more and more and so um when i finally was like okay i'll write the book then i also realized oh wait a minute like i saw all these different beings and they're all different types of guides and when i really think about it there's seven different types of spirit guides that i saw and that i see around other people and now that i'm doing readings i see those same types of guides around people and that's how it happened that's awesome i love that story and um, I love that it's it's that one step at a time, right? Like yes. they give you that next step, yes. the next step, but it's really up to you to 
take action yes. and take the actual step, right? Because you might hear it, yeah. you might feel it, you might feel it in your gut, but you might be afraid of going there or going to that workshop, right? And when you take the first step, it's so amazing how things just yes. reveal themselves. I love that yeah. story. Yeah, you're so right because, and that's so important to say again and again and again and again that um, your spirit guides will not give you the full picture. They never said, oh, you're going to be a best selling author and now you need to start writing. No, that's not how it happens. So don't wait for that. Don't wait until you know exactly what's going to happen. No, you get like one um, piece of guidance that says, um, maybe sign up for that workshop or maybe go listen to this show or um, maybe connect with this person that you found on Instagram. And then you have to, like you said, you have to take that step before you get guidance for the next step. So you don't get to see the end result. You just have to like build that trust and that actually building trust is the most important piece in everything. Um, you have to start building that trust and take that first step and then wait for the next piece of guidance. Take the next step, like you said, and then eventually you will get there. Um, I never knew that I was gonna like write a book and get it published by Hay House. No way, but here I am. And that's what happens when you start trusting yourself and your guides and 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 your the universe. Um, you will be guided towards your path and it will be more amazing than you can ever imagine. Yeah, I love that. And surrender, right? Surrender and trust, yes. they go hand in hand. And I think that that's my personal view. Um, we we want to see the the bigger picture, like the top of the staircase. And I think it's okay to to see that or to visualize that, and you know, see this is where I want to be. But I I think that the timelines change according to how you take the steps. You know, so that's I think that's why our guides don't ever say like this is what's going to happen to you in twenty years because yeah. sometimes they give you a timeline but if you don't take that action or if you decide to take a different route then something yeah. else is going to happen and we just have yeah. infinite timelines available right yeah the future is not written in stone it really depends on what you do um what other people do all kinds of things but yes you can definitely have your own goals like if you know, know you want to be like a famous writer go for it absolutely um but still like take the step mm -hmm. and then see what happens. Take the next step, see what happens. Love that. So can you tell us about the seven types? We can go through each of them. Sure. sure. So um, number one is angels. Most people know what angels are. So they usually don't have to explain that very much. Um, they are divine beings. Um, they're known in several religions, Christianity, Islam, um, Buddhism, different religions know about angels. Number two, ancestors. So these can be ancestors that, that you actually knew, like parents, grandparents, etc. Although they can't be your main guide because your main guide is with you from birth to death or even over several lifetimes. And your parents and your grandparents, if you knew them in life, um, they were here in the 3D with you, so they can't be your main guide. That doesn't mean that they can't be around you and help you and, and be of guidance, but they can't be your main guide. So usually your main guide is from further back, hundreds or even thousands of years back, um, because also they are more evolved that, than the ones that have just passed away. Um, and also... Question. No, go, go ahead. ahead. Sorry. Uh, also, ancestors don't necessarily have to be like um, um, related by blood. They can be um, a spiritual ancestor. So you follow the same spiritual tradition, for example. They can be a vocational ancestor, which means um, if you're a writer, then maybe you have another writer who's your spirit guide to help you with your writing. Mm -hmm. um, so ancestor in a like broader sense. It'd be like your indigenous tribe that you've never met. Yeah, well. absolutely. Yeah, yeah definitely. One, oh, yeah. One question about the ancestors and you were talking about the, the member of the family. Um, can they um, can they be sort of the catalyst for a connection with the guides because we knew them in this life so we feel more 
confident. And I'm asking this because that's kind of like my own experience. I, my dad made the transition when I was eight. And that for me was like my catalyst for the spiritual path because I started questioning, where is he? Can he, can he listen to me, yeah. can he hear me? Yeah. And then he started showing up in my dreams and we sort of built a kind of relationship there. But yeah. I feel like because I knew him, even though for eight years, but I, I felt safe. And so I knew that he was my guide and I, and I was okay with it more than having a guide from, I don't know, the play agents, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or, does that work like yeah. this? Or is it- yes, it does, definitely. Um, they can be like a um, yeah, catalyst to open you up to the spirit world. They can be around you and help you with many things. Um, they can um, yeah, introduce you to new spirit guides. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, so they're like the, the, the host you know, the, the bridge between the, the yeah. great guides. And th- yeah. does that, ha- this, can that happen with like friends too? Like close yes. friends that have passed? Absolutely, yeah. A lot of people start their spiritual journey because a friend passes away and it, and it um, really touches them. Um, so yes, definitely. Cool, and yeah. so we have angels, then ancestors. Ancestors, then we have animal guides. Animal guides are not the souls of an individual animal, but the spirit of the entire species. So you would be working with, let's say, bear spirit or cat spirit. Um, So not an individual animal, although they might look and appear like an individual animal, they usually are the entire species. Mm, And they Um, have different meanings too? Yes, definitely. Yeah, but um, yeah, this is tricky because a lot of people will immediately when they see say let's say um, they think they have a butterfly spirit then they will immediately run to the internet and look up what butterfly means yes (laughs) and I get it I totally get it but before you do that next time first ask yourself what does butterfly mean to me Mm. personally because Mm. our spirit guides do not well sometimes they use universal symbolisms but they will more often use like very personalized personalized symbolism. So what does butterfly mean to you specifically? Really sit down for two minutes and just journal about it, write it down, bullet points, whatever, write it down, what does it mean to me? Because maybe as a child, you went on holidays somewhere and there was a huge flock of like butterflies and you had a really good time with your grandmother. Mm -hmm. So then a butterfly means something very different to you. It reminds you, for example, of your holidays, family, grandmother, beach, whatever it may be. And someone else doesn't have that experience. So it means something completely different to them. So it's important to first check in with yourself. What does it mean to me? Mm -hmm. And then you can go on the Internet and look up what other people say about it. It can give Uh you um, more information. But it's important to first listen to yourself, your own intuition, um, because it's um, um, it's more accurate then the meaning that you extract from it. And also it teaches you to listen to your own intuition and not always run to someone else um, for confirmation right away. And again, trust in yourself, your own intuition is the main thing that you need to start communicating with your guides. Yeah, I really like that. That's a really great tip because we have the answers right within. And when yeah. we practice listening to that intuition and to that inner guidance, we we find our our own answers. And I had a, a, a an experience also with ayahuasca in in Peru. And I think that um, the shamanism has to do a lot with animals. And because I was in the jungle, and I I I literally like became this puma, which I had never thought of like it's not that I love felines and cats I love Mm -hmm. whales (laughs) ever since I was a child but I I love that experience but after I was just thinking why why the puma you know and my first instinct was I'm gonna google the meaning of it but I actually I didn't have internet where I was so I did what you said you know like what was the experience trying to show me and it was more about the feeling and the emotion that that animal was bringing to me 
And it was a feeling of confidence, of trusting my intuition, of stepping into my my own power and authenticity. So that's what I got from from the Puma. And then when I got internet and I looked it up, it was actually, that's what it meant. You know, the Puma meant that and the feminine energy and intuition. So I love that tip. So, okay, we have angels, ancestors, Ancestors. got animal Animal guides. Um, Next up is star beings. Um, And so star beings um, is an, also known as aliens. However, star beings is a little bit different in the sense that, first of all, I don't like to use the term aliens because too many people have seen too many (laughs) scary Hollywood movies. And especially when I do one-on-one readings with people and like introduce them basically to their spirit guides and give them messages from their spirit guides, I don't want people to sit there and freak out and think, oh my God, like, an alien's going to come and eat my brain. So <laughs> uh, that's not how it is. Yeah. And also star beings um, is a bit more um, open in the sense that it basically includes any kind of being that's not or doesn't live here on Mother Earth. And then it, that includes like physical beings, interdimensional beings. So, uh, so also beings that we can't even see with our eyes or, or like, um, feel and also it includes the planets themselves because they're also sentient beings they also have a spirit they also have like um, a consciousness um, and so anything that's not from mother earth um, is a star being um, and it's interesting that you mentioned whales earlier because um, uh, some people no, like a lot of people that work with star beings are connected to a certain star system. So you have Andromeda and Orion and the Pleiades are very famous because of because a lot of people channel the Pleiadians and you have Sirius. And Sirius is interesting in the sense that there is a um, whole story um, around that Sirius being the origin place of um, water-based beings. So whales, dolphins, um, and what we call mermaids, for example. Um, and so, yeah, interesting. I don't know if you know, if you have any connections. Yeah, with I, or... I've recently, and I've had a guest on, on the podcast, um, Heather, she talks a lot about star seeds. And so before our, our podcast, she did a reading for me. It's very thorough. And she checked my coordinates. And uh, one of the, the, the biggest ones was Mintaka, which is a planet that doesn't exist anymore. But they say that this is the planet where whales and dolphins also came from. Um, and so I was like, okay, yeah, <laughs> there's, a, there's a sign and there's a connection there. So I love that. And every time I look at whales, I just don't feel like they, they, they are from this planet. You know, it's just, I just have this feeling. And again, we're talking about connecting with the emotion that they bring. So really, really important tip to everybody to, to go back to that intuition and that feeling. Yeah. And so then um, next up, we have the Ascended Masters. Actually, wait, one, two, three, four. Yeah, we had angels, angels ancestors, ancestor, animal, guides, animal guides, star, star beings. beings, ascended masters, number five. <laughs> um, and so ascended masters are um, beings that have once been humans here on earth, um, and they have reached enlightenment and therefore um, left the reincarnation cycle. And that means that they usually were masters in their own spiritual traditions, um and um yeah have reached a stage that they that allows them to move on and they don't have to reincarnate anymore and so they're helping from the other side um so would jesus be um, an ascended master yes for example jesus krishna like a lot of the um incarnated gods so what we saw as like incarnated gods um are some of the ascended masters Yeah, and there's a lot that we know about, like Jesus, Buddha, um, um, Mary, Mother, uh, Mother Mary, all kinds of. um, But there's also a lot whose name we don't we don't know because they came from a time and their culture was lost and the names were lost. So there are a lot more out there than we know about. Um, Yeah, and then we have um, number six, 
deities, so that's gods and goddesses from all over the planet. Um, they often, uh, yeah, they are a little bit different in the sense that they are very involved with human history. Um, and they um, oftentimes need a lot of devotion. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, you need to like, um, when you want to seriously work with a deity, you need to commit um, to working with them. They like the commitment and then they will um, be happy to work with you. So and would, then like, the last- the, the Hindu goddesses and gods would be in that category. Yeah. Would also, saints be in that category somehow although it's more no of a, i would i would count them more towards the ascended masters saints. okay okay yeah but yes there are i mean these seven categories are a human way of explaining sp spirit guides um so it's like not a um foolproof system in that sense. Like some fit, for example, in the deities category and in the ascended masters category. So they sort of like um, overlap. Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, take and it with it, like- um, Is it possible, because I know you have the quiz on your website and in your book to find out what type of spirit guide you have, but is it possible that we have more than one type, we work with more than one type and there's like one yes. type that's more predominant is that how we work yes definitely so um yeah you mentioned the quiz so i have this quiz that's on my website and an extended version in the book and it's really to help you find out which of these types of spirit guide you have um and it and the one on my website gives you one result but really we have like a team of spirit guides so um it's not just one and in the book it gives you well you can gives you the three um three guides that you have awesome. um and then awesome. the last one number seven is nature spirits and so these are um what um, in the western world we mostly call like elves fairies gnomes etc around the world they obviously have different names um and they work they live in nature and, and the way i see them is as if like let's say a tree has its own soul slash spirit and that would be a nature spirit and they show themselves to us in a form that makes sense to us like they all do um a lot of um, spirit guides don't have a physical form they don't have a human name they just like show themselves in that way and they give us a name so it's easier for us because as humans our brain needs something to hold on to <laughs> and so that's how they do it and so the same with nature spirits um, and nature spirits are great when you want to manifest something and um, they do expect you to give something back and often that's connected to environmental issues. So if you want to connect with a nature spirit, don't throw your trash in the street or in nature mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they're not gonna like it. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, like when you go walk your dog, pick up some trash and throw it in the bin. Um, yeah. They will appreciate that. Yeah, um, Just be I mindful think... of everything that lives around us because we humans tend to think we're the only ones and we are like the lords of like everything but really there are so many beings around us the ones that we can see like the animals but also interdimensional beings and they're really small ones like ants or whatever yeah um also in just, the lower realms right because we tend to think all like yeah. the higher dimensions but there's the first and the yeah. second dimension too right yeah yeah so yeah, be, if you want to work with nature spirits, and generally it's a good idea to um, just be aware that we're not the only mm -hmm. persons out there. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the one that I didn't mention when I talked about the six types, because the other ones really match. But I think it's because maybe I've never really had an experience with a fairy right. or that I know of, but I'll try that <laughs> next time. Yeah, I'll, yeah. Try, I'll try to connect with yeah. them. Definitely do it. Um, the way I do it is like, I really go out in nature. I see, I find a tree or a bush or a plant or a flower that I feel drawn to. And then I really treat it like another person. So I literally go and sit with it. And I imagine what it would look like if it was a nature spirit. And, and I hope you caught that because I just said, I use my imagination. Mm -hmm. um, so use your imagination to 
um, really, yeah, imagine what 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 that spirit would look like. And the more you use your imagination, the more you put energy into that, and the more energy you put into that, um, they can use to manifest themselves. And again, it doesn't have to be in physical form; it can just be in your mind's eye. But um, that's how it, that's how it works for me with nature and spirits. Yeah, I like I love that. And we were talking about like overlapping the types. You know, I, I had this vision of a butterfly that I actually interacted with last week in the park. And when I think of butterflies, I could also think of a fairy, you know, because it's yeah, tiny exactly. and flying all, all, yeah. all around. I love yeah. that. Um, what is a good um, ritual that one can do to practice that connection with whichever type of spirit guide that you could give us so um the way i teach it is that you um sit down like you would for a meditation um and it's very similar to meditation but it's also different so um you would close your eyes and just like let your mind calm down um and you take a few minutes just to breathe and to just get into like the right mood and the right mindset and then you start focusing on your root chakra and you just feel into that space don't expect anything don't make yourself feel see anything just feel into that space at the ba base of your spine and just see what's there if there's nothing there that's fine too um and then you um visualize actually that's the same thing as imagine um, you visualize um, roots that grow out of your root chakra and then down through like your chair and through like the floor of your house and into the earth and through all the layers of the earth all the way down to the center of the earth and there you visualize a, a big crystal and how the roots wrap around it and then you inhale the energy of Mother Earth through those roots into your body and let it circle all around, all the way into your fingertips, um, toes, hair, etc. And um, then you focus on the, your, the top of your head, your crown chakra, and you visualize that opening by visualizing a door or a window or an eye that opens up. And then you see a white pillar of light that connects your crown chakra with the center of the universe. If you have a hard time um, visualizing the center of the universe, like maybe it helps to visualize the center of the galaxy because it's more finite. It's not that infinite. And right. it, for some people it's easier. So, and then um, you breathe in the energy from the center of the universe or galaxy down into your body. Again, let it circulate everywhere. And, um, you do that so that you are held in place so that you can't feel lost in the next part and so then you focus on your um, third chakra your solar plexus and um, you breathe into that again feel into that space um, and then visualize a, a, a yellow sun sitting there the, our third chakra um, is our personal power center so willpower and things like this mm -hmm. um, and willpower is connected to the sun as well and in astrology leo etc and that's why I like a, a yellow sun and then you let that sun expand 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 until it's like fills up your entire aura um, and while you let that sun expand you also set the intention that that sun pushes out any energy that's not yours and so you basically create a sacred space that's filled with just your own energy. And then you just sit in that energy for 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Mm. Um, the first few times you don't do anything else. Why? Because if you, um, as humans, we are not used to just be in our own energy and even know what our own energy feels like. We're constantly thinking about other people, thinking about the future, thinking about the past. We're everywhere, but not here with us in our own energy. Mm -hmm. And so um, you do this so that later on, when you get to go to the next step, you actually can feel when your spirit guide comes close. And how are you ever going to feel your spirit guide if you don't even know what your own energy feel, yeah. feels like? So this is like a preparation to yeah. 
connect. Yeah. So just a quick recap, re re recap, sit to meditate, connect with the root, imagine the roots from the center of the earth, connect with your crown and third eye, pillar of light, and then feel your solar plexus. For those who don't know, it's um, like four or five fingers above the navel, like below the, the rib cage and just imagine that light expanding and stay in that energy and do that for yeah. a few days. Yeah, do that for a few days until you really are, get used to your own energy and what it feels like to sit in your own energy space and in that sacred space that you create. If you're worried about like negative spirits, you can also, um, once you create like that, um, once that sun like fills up your entire aura and you create that sacred space, you can add a like layer of protection around it mm -hmm. um, to make you feel safer. We can call and it then, love. yes, you can call <laughs> it love. You can give it any color you want, but whatever works for you. Um, it's all about the intention, really. And so then the next step, once you practice this a few times and really practice this a few times, if you don't, if you take the shortcut, you won't get the same results and then you'll be disappointed and say, oh, it's all bullshit. No, you have to like really take the steps and then you will see the results. So do that a few times. And then um, after that, you do the same thing. And then you add um, the next step, which is you ask your guides to come close. You don't have to know who they are. You don't even have to know what type they are. You don't have to know what they look like or what their name is. You just set the intention. You just ask your spirit guide or guides to come close. And then um, as if they were waiting in front of your of the door of your house only mm -hmm. in this case they wait kind of like in front of your sacred space. Right. And then you ask them to step into your sacred space and then you just pay attention to how the energy shifts and changes because mm -hmm. by now you're used to being with your own energy and you will feel when someone else is in your space because they have another another vibration and you will feel it because you sensitized yourself to that and so you ask them to step in and you pay attention to what happens. Maybe you feel really hot. Maybe you feel really cold. Maybe your nose starts itching. Maybe um, you start feeling like you're taller than you are or smaller than you are or like bigger mm -hmm. or um, your heart starts racing. There, Everyone is different. So your um, body can react in different ways than other people. Mm -hmm. And but you should feel a change and then you will ask your guide to step out of your sacred space again and then that energy should change again right because they're outside you're in your own bubble again um, it should feel like it was before they stepped in and so you play with that a little bit you ask them to step in out in out until you figure out oh, okay this is this is like what it feels like when they're with me, when they're close to me, when they're inside my mm -hmm. space. So that's, and that's what you called call a, your calling card. Exactly. Ah. Exactly. That's what um, the calling card is. And I learned about the calling card from one of my mentors, Gordon Smith. Um, and he, um, so, yeah, then you know, okay, this is the sign when my spirit guide is close, this is what it feels like. And so then you can go ahead and even when you feel it, you're in the supermarket, you don't even think about your spirit guide and suddenly you feel that feeling, you know, your guide is close and then you know, oh, I need to pay attention because there's something going on that there's a message there. So then really look around, is something happening that's important? Go inside, feel like what, what emotions do I have right now? What thoughts do I have right now? What's, what's the message? What's important? And so, um, and then the next step, and you do this again, like do this um, um, for a few days, for a few weeks. And if, um, if nothing happens, like if nothing changes, then just keep doing the meditation. To exactly. That energy until you feel that shift in the vibration. Exactly. Yeah. Remember, this is a skill, just like any other skill. You can do it. Everyone can do it. It might take you a little bit longer. Maybe you, it goes really fast. It doesn't really matter. Just keep going and you will get there. Mm -hmm. And then um, the next step is to ask yes and no questions. And you do that by either saying, um, okay, so here's a question. Um, please step into my space. If the answer is yes, stay outside. If the answer is no, 
or the other way around, play around with that. Um, and then after that, you can start asking more open-ended questions. And we can but start with like process. a question that's really like basic, like, is my name yes. this or? Yeah. Yes, exactly. Ask like really inconsequential questions. Don't do not start asking about your purpose or should I stay married to this person or other like really important questions, because um, otherwise your ego will come in and say no, you're making this up, etc. You need questions that are really inconsequential. Um, is my name is a good um, way to start. You can also ask should I wear the blue dress tonight? Yes or no? stuff mm -hmm. that doesn't have any consequences for your life um, because you're still practicing um yeah and like with everything practicing you don't want to take big risks so and then over time you just start building a relationship because with your guide because it's not different from building a relationship with another person yeah. you don't go into the street and talk to a rest random stranger and invite and them to dinner asking in your house. Questions yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so you need to like start building that relationship and building that trust with your guide. And they don't mind. Um, yeah. It's totally fine. They understand we are in a human body. Things work a little bit differently for us. Um, and that's okay. And so that's um yeah that's my process of yeah no I love that connecting. and I think it's very simple everybody can do it it's clearly like step by step um and i actually think that some people might already know what their calling card is is they just they're just not aware of that right yeah um totally. when i started meditating that years ago uh, seven years ago maybe i don't know i would um have like spaz i don't know if that's the word spasm like a little yeah, I know what you mean. In, in, yeah. in my in my right hand, sometimes mm -hmm. in the arm. And mm -hmm. at first I was like, oh, this is nothing. But then I thought, well, maybe I should write something. Right. And so I would start writing and I would get messages. And um, even to this day, and even even now, I was feeling the the, the spasm yeah. here. And because um, I listened to one of your uh, previous podcasts about the calling card and I and I did that. Um, and so I, I got that like right away. And so I know that this is my calling card yeah. and I love that. It's just that little, it's the little confirmation. And I think the more yeah. you do it, the more trust you build. Exactly. I love that. Thank you yeah. so much for sharing this. And for yeah, all absolutely. the listeners, also, if, you, if you do that, let us know how it goes. And um, yeah, definitely. If you want definitely. more like assistance from Jamila, you also do readings, right? Yes. Is it one-on-one? Yeah, I do one on one readings where I um, it's a 60 minute um, call zoom call and I basically tell you who your spirit guide is and give you a message, the most important messages your guide has for you and you can also ask questions. That's awesome. So you, you teach people how to communicate and connect, but you also you're also able to yeah. connect with the person's yeah. spirit guides and like yeah. so pass on the message. Yeah, so I do the readings, which is kind of like a done for you solution in the sense that I give you the reading, mm -hmm. and you just have to listen. But I also have a course where I teach like how, um, yeah, you can connect yourself. Mm -hmm. um, um, and I also do what's called a deep dive. It, it's basically the same as the course, only I sit down with like a person one on one and teach it one on one via zoom over three hours. Um, and, and yeah, you get just more, um, um, you can ask more questions and, and um, I can help you with problems and these kinds That's of things. That's wonderful. And as usual, um, I'll put the links in the show's notes of your website and, and the book. Um, just to wrap up, I have some questions, which I call fun and deep. So you can just answer whatever comes to your mind. Okay. Um, what is your definition of guidance? I would say it is, yeah, what we said earlier. So I'm on a path and someone or something um, 
or yeah, gives me little nudges like, hey, look over here or what about over there? And I would say that's guidance, similar to a mentor in the sense that they don't walk your path for you. Um, they just give you little nudges. Yeah, I like that. It's just nudges. It's not even like yeah. this is what you have to do, right? It's just a no. little <laughs> Love that. Yeah. Right. Imagine that all the books in the world were going to be destroyed and deleted oh my god no forever <laughs> if you had to save only one book which book would you save and why wow that's a yours. good question but other than yours which one would you <laughs> no i wouldn't say mine <laughs> um oh my god that's a really good question there are so many books i would probably i can't I can't decide on one, but I would probably um, the spiritual texts of every culture and spiritual tradition, like the main texts, like the Bible, Quran, um, like these kinds of, yeah. Cool. I think that would be my answer. I know that's more than one, but no, I would yeah, need I get to. it. It's a, it's yeah. a, I mean, there are so many books. And, um, yeah. All right, the next one, it's also a hypothetical um, question. Let's suppose that in many years from now, when you transition to the spiritual realm, and then your, your cosmic helper, the cosmic librarian at the Akashic Records, tells you, you've done a great job, you don't have to go back to Earth, um, and we're going to promote you, you're going to be a spirit guide. Which mm -hmm. type of spirit guide would you choose to be? <laughs> oh, that's also a fun question. Hmm, what kind of... Uh, an Ascendant Master. Awesome. Um, what is one thing that people would be surprised to know about you? I'm a huge introvert. And when I do workshops, for example, I'm obviously the one who's like on stage and I talk all the time and I know I'm pretty good at it and I can interact with people uh, and I'm like there and all that. But then I need two days like just to myself. <laughs> but so, yeah, especially yeah. if people meet me in these kinds of circumstances, they can be very surprised when I say that I'm a huge, huge introvert. I agree. You, you definitely have help when you're on the stage, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, let's suppose that we sign contracts before coming to this life, which I kind of believe that we do. And we choose what we came here to learn as well as to teach. What would you say um, is for you? What, what do you think this would be for you in this lifetime as Jamila? Trust both like i my main lesson is trust and also that's the same like it's my main message to trust yourself trust your guides trust the universe love that um and if your legacy would be only three words carved out on a tree trunk or a cave if you will which three words would you choose to carve Probably also trust, compassion. Trust, compassion, and love, I guess. Mm, yeah. yeah. Well, Jamila, I want to acknowledge you for your commitment to your spiritual path and to spread that message of love and to help us fellow humans to know that we are not doing this alone. So I appreciate yeah. you and I thank you for being your most authentic self and for shining your light. Oh, thank you so much. And if anyone has questions, you can also find me at thespiritguidemedium.com. Thank you so much for having me. This was a very fun conversation. Thank you, Jamila. Much love. Thanks for watching or listening to this episode. If you would like to learn more about Jamila's work, you can go to her website, www.jamunja.com. There you'll be able to do the quiz to find out about your spirit guide, join Yamila's show and learn how to work with her and order her book.
As usual, you can find links on the show's notes. And once again, if this has brought you value, please subscribe to my podcast or my YouTube channel. Take a screenshot of it, share it to your Instagram story, and be sure to tag me and Jamila so that we know it's brought you value and your friends might benefit from this episode too. As always, keep shining your light, keep your heart open, and let love lead the way. I love you. See you in the next episode. Thank you.